back to the channel. Today we're doing a Q&A. I've been away from YouTube for a while. At this point, I don't want to think, maybe even over a month. I haven't posted, which is crazy. Guys, <laughs> it's been a month since I filmed this Q&A that I'm finally getting up. I don't even have an excuse. Like at this point, I don't even know why it's taken me this long to get back into YouTube. I think I've just really enjoyed the break from this side of work and stuff and just not posting and it's bad. But I'm back. I'm back, boo. Thank you all as well for all of your comments and messages asking where I've been. Am I okay? Why am I not posting? You miss me on YouTube and all that stuff. It means the world and it was the best motivation every day to try and like chip away at this edit. Don't know why it took me so long, but enjoy this little chill q and I love all of you. The best audience ever, but we're back. Consistency is back. I asked for these questions on my Instagram and guys, <laughs> you just... Whoa, it's still going. Too many, too many. Thankfully, a lot of them repeated themselves. Um, I'm gonna try and get through as many as possible. Thank you for sending them in. You can follow me on there if you don't already. First question that I've gotten quite a few of and messages and like comments. How have you been? People saying, come back to YouTube. First of all, I never left YouTube. Like I know I haven't posted and I feel like, well, I did a little pinned comment in my last Days of Seussmas video. So my last upload, kind of explaining why like I won't be posting more Seussmas videos. But I feel like I also kind of haven't really said and I've been active on other socials So maybe it's a bit like I just have taken a break from YouTube Firstly, I would never properly do that YouTube is my favorite platform in the world I'm on it every single day My friend Ruby says 2024 is the year of standing on business and I could not agree more However for me the whole business side of it. Yeah, that's coming. She's brewing, you know We gotta let her marinate on that one. I've more been standing on my health business because I've just had things happen to me where I'm like, I actually need to stop ignoring things and actually sort my out. And that's exactly what I've been doing. I've had some really weird ovarian pain on my front and my back. It's happened twice now. The last time it happened was the end of my Australia trip, which was not the best and definitely meant my lack of uploads. Like, you know, it lasted for a week, this really intense pain. I went to the doctor. Luckily, nothing is wrong. I'm waiting on some more blood results to come through and some things like that to fully rule some things out. I'm currently kind of looking a bit more inward with my diet being a result of this. I'm so sensitive to what I eat. I have a big sugar addiction. I have suffered with rosacea. I think you can see it there a little bit. And it's gotten so much better. And I know that a big cause of that is sugar. That will definitely affect pain the more sugar you take, heavy periods, all of that stuff. So right now I'm monitoring my blood sugar levels with this thing. I used this once before and I did it wrong. My results for the two weeks, well, there wasn't any results because I wasn't like logging it in the app. Um, my mum, who's training to be a nutritionist, she wants me to get into seed cycling. So we're going to start doing that. I'm also going to a like lecture hall of training nutritionists for them to like kind of study me for a session and like recommend things for me for my diet and that kind of thing, which I think will be so interesting and like really weird, but kind of fun. And I also had my first ever osteo appointment this week. The osteo has been helping me out. I know there are things like my posture is terrible. I don't really work out and I need to get into a good healthy fitness routine to better my body. And like the way that my osteo was horrified by my posture and my spine, my poor spine and like the way I've been treating my body and like not correcting it and taking care of it on a daily basis. And it was just so humbling to have a professional be like, girl, you need Need help. So yeah, this is the year of standing on business. In terms of Australia, somebody asked me, did you enjoy Australia? How was Australia? It was amazing. One of my favorite trips I've ever been on. My first time in Australia, I loved it. We spent most time in Sydney, which is where my sister lives. So me and my mum went out to visit my sister for Christmas. We traveled around a bit. We went to Jervis Bay and stayed in Paper Bark Camp, which I highly recommend. What else did we do? We went to the Blue Mountains, which was okay. It was probably compared to the rest of the trip. Oh, also, so I got all my pain there. So actually I did not enjoy that. <laughs> enjoy that trip because I was actually suffering with like a hot water bottle curled over in bed. Oh, we went to Hamilton Island. That was amazing. I would definitely go back there. I was planning of doing two, three videos when I was out there. No. I feel like when you go on holiday with family that don't care about taking content for you, don't wanna be in content, it makes it very difficult to be like, I'm gonna vlog the trip. And then I last minute decided to do the whole six days of Seussmas thing, which was a mistake. I think it was too late when I decided I didn't pre-edit enough and I guess pre-film enough in advance knowing I was going to Australia. Like it was just too much. And I was kind of thinking, oh, I'll edit on the plane. No. No, 
I did not edit on those plates. I was fast asleep. I was watching films. I was enjoying my holiday. Like I went to the other side of the world and I very soon realized into the trip, like I just cannot work whilst I'm out here. Long story short, yeah. I had the best time in Australia. I felt a lot of stress and guilt at the start about not working and feeling like I was really missing this opportunity. Part of me does regret not vlogging Australia. I actually did film a couple clips to do an outfit of the week at the very start of the trip. And they were okay, like they were whatever. So I feel like happy to let them go. But I think future me looking back will be sad that there's no videos of me in Australia. But if I was there with friends, 100% I would have been working my ass off to like vlog the whole trip and stuff. And I have another big trip coming, which I'll talk about in this video. And that, no excuses. Like I will be making all of the content in that trip. I feel like it was just bad timing and I needed a break. I needed a break. Somebody also asked, why didn't you go to Melbourne? I didn't have time. Like I was with family. We planned the trip around what was closest to us. With hindsight, I feel like the thrifting scene in Sydney was was good. Like I really liked the shop swap and I feel like Melbourne probably has a lot of spots like that and a lot of really good vintage. My friend Ebony lives there and she definitely would have taken me around and shown me spots there just like Jolie did. I hang out with Jolie when I was in Sydney and that was amazing. And yeah, I just don't have time, but you best believe I'm coming back to Australia. I would go back at the end of 2024 if I could afford it. My New Year's resolutions. Honestly, my main thing is to work on my health. Like I need to get this sorted. My gut health, vitamins, my hair, my skin, everything. I just want to really obsess about getting a good routine and making my work flow with that. So if I'm like healthy within my body and productive with the way that I care about my body, it will make me more productive with my work. Like I just know it will. And also I just want to grind with videos and content. There are so many ideas that I have and I don't think I'm quick enough to do them. What what are you looking forward to the first months of this year and like what are you planning for YouTube? I want to make more general outfit inspiration videos. I feel like I do a lot of talking and not enough showing of like things I actually own. Also I'm going to New York. I'm going to New York and that is an upcoming question about travel. So I will like save that, but that is like a big thing that I've been looking forward to and like a milestone and something I'm like working towards in terms of like work related things for when I'm there and like all this stuff. And I also really want to work on more personal projects this year. I really want to make a sticker collection. I don't know if I said this before, but I've been wanting to do that for years. So yeah, that's something I really want to do by halfway through the year. Have like had that out. We shall see, fingers crossed. My travel wish list for 2024. So I'm already going to New York in May. I'm actually going out with my girls from school to go visit our friend Isabel from school who moved there. That will be like the best thing ever for all of us. And then I'm gonna stay on for a few weeks and hang out with Chloe, Chloe Falopolis. Chloe, if you're watching this, I can't wait. And I think I even said in, what was it like my Christmas wishes video how I wanted that pink I love New York mug. Chloe bought it for me and her, we're matching. She bought it for me and us. And I cannot wait. I definitely want to go back to Italy. I actually just got back from a very spontaneous short trip with my boyfriend to Rome, which was amazing. And I just love Italy so much. I'd really love to go to Sicily. I haven't been there since I was a baby. Anywhere kind of fun and hot that I haven't been to recently. Lisbon, I haven't been there in years. I would love to go back to Lisbon. Also the Caribbean, like if we're talking wish list, the Caribbean, I'd love to go there in winter this year. <laughs> My most worn pieces of 2023. Camo baggy jeans, you know the ones. They're from Menace Vintage. Never getting rid of them. Never getting rid of them. I would honestly say Peachy Den pieces came to mind as well. I've been rinsing all of their stuff, especially the Kylie collection. It's just so good. And my black Salomon trainers, you know the ones. That brings me on to my next question, which was your best purchase of 2023. A few people asked this one. Definitely the Salomons. Then I feel like trainers are just expensive as they are. I can't even remember the price, but I remember being like this doesn't seem too crazy and I would buy them again at that price for a heartbeat like if something happened to them I'm rebuying them I think they're amazing but also my Y project heels the black ones I've been wanting them for years and I've been needing like some proper kitten heels and they're just worth the investment I'm so happy with them where do I get my inspiration from I would say 19 no that's dramatic maybe like 80 percent of my inspiration comes from Pinterest follow me on there Susie Lola if you don't already I love it something I need to do and this is my whole standing up business being productive thing i need to be uploading my own pictures on pinterest like every week because then i see people upload my pictures
pictures and I'm like, hey, don't beat me to it. Like, give me a minute. But yeah, I love Pinterest. Whenever I'm bored, I just scroll on there. I have boards for everything, which you can go look at for inspiration if you want. TikTok and Instagram, when they hit, they hit. I love both of those platforms for finding new smaller creators and small brands specifically, like non-influencer creatives on Instagram. They're like the coolest people on the internet, let's be real. How do you get over an ex? I'm so heartbroken about my girlfriend ending things. That's really sad. Like, I'm really sorry for you that you're going through this. I've been there. I think it's quite easy to get over somebody, but it's like the stuff they leave behind. It's like the anxiety and the insecurity and the whatnot. Like it took me a year to kind of like get myself back to it. The biggest thing I can say is time. Like it's mad how people say, oh, time heals all wounds, but it does. Like it literally does. Like it will just take time. And I think you've got to let yourself like wallow in this. I remember thinking, and I still think this all the time, like everything happens for a reason. As shit as it felt in that moment, you got broken up with for a reason. Like you're not meant to be with that person. Like it just was not meant to happen. The attachment book, attached helped me so much. I wasn't even in a bad place when I read it. I was in actually a really good place. Definitely helped me to see previous mindsets in a different light and like took me back a bit to when I felt so insecure in relationships and like reminded myself if this comes up again in the future, like this is how to deal with it. And it's so interesting. And I recommend this book to so many people. Favorite singer, I got quite a few questions on this. I feel like my, I always say that my favorite band or like group, I guess is Brockhampton. Always has been really Really, since I found them and always will. No, I actually say Arctic Monkeys is. Maybe it's more Brockhampton nowadays. I don't know, like I'll always be obsessed with Arctic Monkeys. I've really been back in a Wolf Alice era. I've been obsessed with Wolf Alice. I'll put my favorite songs on screen. So good, so good. I'm kind of like manifesting them playing Glastonbury this year. <laughs> Advice on making friends and making beautiful friendships. I've had this in the past, manifest it. I truly believe it. You gotta act as if these friends are already in your life because they already exist on this planet. Like they're already walking around the shops. You maybe even pass them on the street. Like all your future friends, you, you know, fill your soul. Like they already exist. So it's just about acting as if you're already friends with them, knowing they're coming into your life. My friend Jemima, she has started this like online group for creatives in London. And there are so many things like this. Like I see this weekly on TikTok of people being like, where's my fellow small fashion creators or like blah, blah, blah girls that like anyone want to be friends. Like it's so easy nowadays, especially from TikTok to make friends online and so many people in the same boat as you. So I feel like things like that. It's so easy to reach out and like find those people. How did you meet your boyfriend um, on Hinge? Shout out Hinge guys. I tried to get a Hinge sponsorship. They never replied to me, but that's okay. That's okay. If it comes one day, you'll know that my work here is done. And like, maybe I need to manifest that really hard because I love Hinge. Like I've used it for years and it's made me meet best person ever. So yeah, love Hinge. Is your boyfriend as well dressed as you? This made me laugh. Yeah, guys, I would say he is. I would say his true form is dressing like a grandpa. Like that's where he thrives. Like when he dresses like a grandpa, best dressed man I've ever seen. Like he just looks so good. I love him. How to find your personal style. Oh boy, I feel like this one's just long, isn't it? Like sometimes you feel so in tune with your personal style and sometimes you're like, what do I wear? Like what are, what are my, what, who am I? Like who am I? But Pinterest boards, experiment with your own wardrobe, like have try on sessions. What are the things that you're always wearing and why do you like them? I would say copying people's outfits really works. I'm not saying copy all the time and always wear them out, but in terms of like do a styling session in your room on yourself and copy people you liked outfits and just like see what works for you is like your own take on that. Did you go to uni? Yeah, I did. I went to Leeds Uni and I did art and design at the uni of. I was there for five years at Leeds. I stayed on with friends to stay. So many, well, actually some of my friends still live there. I love Leeds. It's one of my favorite places. I said this before, I hated my degree. I don't know if I recommend my course. I don't unrecommend it, but I think go in with haste, if you know what I mean. I just thought it'd be more arty than it actually was, and I should have gone to the art uni. I tried to drop out and change courses. Things didn't work, various reasons, but I loved being a student in Leeds. It was the best ever. What movies, shows, and events are you looking forward to this year? I really want to watch loads of old films from like the 90s, 2000s, things I've seen before, things I haven't. I want to watch old childhood favorites. Like I want to watch loads of old Disney channel and like get kind of like nurture my inner child one side of it and also just see if it gives me inspiration for things. Sofia Coppola I want to like rinse all of her old films that I used to watch. Also new TV I'm really into Traitors on BBC one of the best shows ever like it's just so good like it's we're not comparing it to Sofia Coppola guys but like it's good. I really want to watch Succession that's on my list 
and Priscilla. That's just come out. I'm really excited to see that. And in terms of like events and things, I'm really excited for festival season already, even though it's the dead of winter right now. Glastonbury, bring it on. Gala, bring it on. We out here, I might go to again. We shall see. But yeah, I'm really excited for day festivals and festivals. Top 10 brands of 2023. 10 is a lot. I don't know if I'll do 10, but I'll just list. Peachy Den, Knee High, Nina Bo, Freya McKee, Dump Him Store, Cuckoo Intimates, Rags Redone as Vintage. Vival Studios where I got this top. My favorite vintage shop right now. I don't even want to say it too much because if you guys come onto the drops quicker than me and get the things that I want, I'm going to cry. But also Vivian's, Vivian's Vintage. She just opened up her store in Brick Lane. Bell the Label, Lexola, Meow, Taurus Souvenirs. I've loved them all. I love this question. Your favorite accessories? My tool belt, you already know. Badges and carabiners and charms. I'm loving it. I've got so many good knickknack charms at the moment that my boyfriend got me some stuff from Japan, like miffy things. And I've got loads of badges. My badges, I said this in a previous video. I wanted to like get my badges collection up. She's up, she's up and she's ready. Like she's so good. This one's from the Barbican that I got the other day. How was your New Year's? Guys, my New Year's was spent on a plane. My mum and I went back in Australia time, New Year's Eve and arrived back super early New Year's day, UK time. It was great. I hate New Year's. My ideal New Year's is probably being on a plane, being on holiday somewhere, not caring, not getting involved. I hate fireworks, I'm sorry. I'm a fireworks Grinch. I think they are boring. I think they are just a noise polluter. I think they're a waste of money, probably bad for the environment, let's be real. Just annoying. They're so annoying. Like, I don't care. I don't want to hear boom, boom, boom from my house. And it always scares my cat and makes my cat shit everywhere. That's just memories growing up. And I'm like, why? Like, literally, why? I hate New Year's. Yeah, so my New Year's for me was heaven. Like, me and my mum on the plane together, two New Year's haters sat next to each other, like, living it up. Do you know what I mean? So that was great. How did you start as an influencer? Do you have any tips on getting over your fears and starting? For me, I think I was lucky because Depop was sort of my way in. Back then Depop really felt like a social media, I'm not kidding. And that was like my way into getting my first audience on YouTube. And I know so many of you have come from there. Like I meet you guys, you say it, you message me about Depop and stuff. Like it's so cool that I had that and I love that. Also close friends, I wanted to do it for so long, like make a channel for me. I was so scared, so scared for no reason. I would make videos, I would delete them, etc. I would like whisper in my room trying to record videos because I was scared my neighbors next door were gonna hear me. Like, no, they're not. And you just need like family friends, like close people around you, get YouTube, who get Get you get what you want to talk about to just encourage you and I always just say film and edit the video with no pressure to upload like that's the first step oh as soon as I start recording I have to upload it no you don't just like do it to the very end point and then decide if you want to upload and I feel like once you've done all that work you probably will anyway that's my advice and YOLO like if not now when new creators to look out for in 2024 I'm so happy someone asked this because the other day I've literally found my new obsession her name is Bianca Matisse Taylor I found her on YouTube because she did like an LA empty apartment tour and I was like click because I'm obsessed with like moving vlog apartment tour videos. I now follow her on like Instagram and TikTok. I think she's great. The last question that I'm going to end on is what would be your dream collaboration or product line? The biggest thing that I want to do this year is make a clothing collection with somebody with a sustainable brand that I love. It can literally be like one item. I do not care. Like I'd rather it be one thing and it be perfect in my eyes and like 10 things and they will be a bit meh like I don't care I just need to release something and if we're talking about like dream product line I think for me things like a beanie like we just know I love beanies like a track jacket you guys know I love them or like trackies like really fun trackies even design more jewelry I had so much fun designing the jewelry with en route and I would love to design jewelry for somebody else one day as well charms or carabiners that would be really cool to make my own carabiner with like a little charm coming off it or like a charm you could use as a pin or in your hair. I've always thought about homeware as well. I love candles and like candle designs. That would be really fun to do that. I've always wanted to make rugs. And I have this design, you know my cow print? I have like my tattoo back in uni when I was like, oh, I'm gonna start making prints. And I sold a lot of prints at uni and I was like, oh, this is gonna like develop one day. I really wanted to get into rug tufting and make my own rugs. And I wanted to put the cow like on a tufting rug. And then I thought about that cow on like a fluffy dressing gown, like the Dylan's candy bar ones that Devin Carlson wears. I was obsessed with that dressing gown. And I was like, imagine that with my cow print. 
obsessed. Then I was like, oh, I can just make art prints. That would be cool to release like a proper, and I've done that before, but like a proper set of prints and you can order them in frames. And I think once I start these mini projects again, things will just happen. Yeah, that's my goal for the rest of the year. And hopefully I just keep releasing things. That'll be really fun. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I've had so much fun making this video and I feel like I've just had a smile on my face the whole time. Like that's how excited I am about getting back to filming. I'm actually really happy that I haven't filmed in so long. I feel like it's just made me come back and be extra excited and enthusiastic about it. Subscribe if you haven't already, it would mean the world. Follow me on my social media to keep up with me. I will see you in my next video. Love you all.